yeah welcome back again and today we will discuss uh, on the design part of the dome so last class we have seen the basic idea of what are the different types of domes and uh, how the domes are classified uh, and how do we find out the what are the forces coming in the domes like that okay now let us see if so and we have seen like uh, Uh, in the dome there are two types of forces mainly uh, meridian meridional thrust which is usually denoted by t and uh, hope force h normally denoted by h these are the two things uh, that is mainly a, a dome is subjected to and uh, we have further seen uh, we have seen like uh, h the maximum value of h h occurs when theta is zero when the theta the value of theta is zero and uh, what is that theta is is zero and uh, the maximum value h max will be is equal to w and r by 2 which will happen at the crown at the top of uh, because if if the if your dome is like this the dome is uh, like this uh, you know this is called the crown this point is your crown and uh, this is your center point okay so let us say this is your theta because uh, think that our my dome is our dome is only up to here okay, this is a part of the uh, that circle that so this is up to here so let us say this is your theta this one let us say this is your theta okay so this is zero and uh, theta increases like this from here so at this point is the maximum you will have your h max that is wr by 2 and uh, we have further seen at point uh, 51.8 degree when theta is, is equal to 51.8 degree uh, you will have your h zero at that that particular ring that particular band your h will be equal to zero and above this you will have a compression and below this you have a tensile h in h the value the, the magnitude of h will be tensile in nature it will be compression in nature okay this is what we have seen okay so now let us see so we will be designing as a base as a prerequisite or a prelude to this is we will be discussing or we will be designing our dome for the maximum value of t and h Okay, so as I told you, you will be having two values. H will be having positive and negative. Also, you will be taking the both the values, and for that, we will be designing. Okay, so these are the uh, design steps we will just go through. Then, when we do a problem, it will be very clear. So, the, as a first step, you know, as I told you again uh, before, we will be doing the design mainly on working stress method. Okay, so that one you please keep in mind. so first thing is you know you write down the basic uh, values the data has given to you in the question like you know the height of the dome height of the dome is normally we take it as a r okay this is not correct so you just forget this one this is normally we take it as r okay rise of the dome this is r rise of the dome is this is called r okay this is uh, your dome and this height is called r this is your dome rise of the dome r f c k f i loads and everything you just note down and the next step is you know we need to proportion the dome like the thickness of the dome or can the radius of the dome okay in the question normally what they will the what they will give is a room a room is in the form of a circle of radius 10 and for that a dome is to be constructed so it doesn't mean that the room circle room diameter is given and the dome diameter will not be same if the uh, the if the diameter of the room is 5 meter the dome diameter it is need not be 5 meter actually because the dome will continue like this so as you can see it will continue that it will complete actually circle of the dome may be somewhere here so this is uh, this uh, is appears to be you know not in proportion so maybe the circle of the dome will be somewhere here okay but the, the diameter of the, the center of i mean center of the dome will be somewhere here center of the room will be somewhere here so this are this is different so we will be mainly looking on the diameter of the dome so it will be somewhere here right okay so we need to find out the thickness of the dome 
thickness of the dome is normally it is assumed as 75 to 150 mm so usually it takes 75 mm okay and if the point load is there if both the ud load and point load is there take 100 mm of if it is only ud load then take 75 okay all right then the rise of the dome r it is normally if it is given you take it in the, if it is given in the question you take as it is otherwise l by 5 you take normally it is l by 4 to l by 6 l means the this one this radius okay the length of the i mean the span of the room not the radius okay find out the radius of the dome so this is an important point here the radius of the dome how do we calculate the radius of the dome is like this say let us say this is a circle okay and uh, this is the our room room diameter ad ab ad and b so and uh, pd is the height of the uh, room the rise of the uh, the dome actually so by the property of the triangle you know property of the circle i can write like this from the property of the circle i can write pd suppose let us say this is a circle just uh, this is not in proportion so there will be a confusion will come this is a circle like this you know so let us say this is a, this is one line okay and uh, if it's any any line somewhere if i take anywhere if i take a line somewhere here it is like this so let us say this is uh, o circle o okay let us say this is a a and let us say this is B and let us say this is C let us say this is D okay and CD is diameter of the circle so okay right so diameter is nothing but you know that CD is the diameter of the circle which meaning it is a diameter of circle D is equal to 2R 2 times radius we know that okay. so I can write like this as a property of the circle I can write like this here C O C O C okay into O D this will be equal to A O A O A into O B okay otherwise O Z into O D means uh, I can write like this 2 R from C D if CO is removed, it will come OD. 2R minus OC. Okay. Is equal to OA into OB. Alright. So, from this, we can find out uh, R. Okay. This is the principle we will use here actually to find out the value of R. Same is the case here. So, I want to find out the value of, uh, you know, R here. AC here. So, I can write like this. PD. PD into 2R, 2 times diameter minus PD, as we have done here actually. Just go through, is equal to AD into BD. From this, I can find out the R, which is the diameter of the uh, dome. Okay, so theta I can find. So this is the theta here. Okay, so this is the theta. So theta, sine theta is, uh, you know, this dB. dB by R it is. BC is R. So from that, you can find out the theta to understand whether the theta is more than 51 degree, 51.8 degree or less or like that. So, hope this is clear for you. Okay. So, once this is got, you know, so the next step is calculate the loads, dead load and live load coming on the dome actually. So, live load will be given to you directly and dead load, as usual, dead load is nothing but 25 into 25 is the thickness, I mean, the unit weight of the concrete and T is the thickness of the dome, 25 into T. So, here uh, you should uh, remember one thing here it is. See, we have seen in the last class the formula for finding out H and T. So, all those formula, uh, we can we have seen in the last class for finding out the H and T, the formula here. So, all this formula is applicable only when the dome doesn't have any opening at the top. I repeat, this formula is applicable only when the dome doesn't have any opening at the top. But in usual practice, as I told you before, there can be some opening at the top. For example, if this is a dome, uh, let us say, um, what I say, yeah, this is a dome like this. Okay, dome like this. 
but here as i told you if there is a lantern is there lantern as i told you before lantern like this you know for uh, this and all so uh, what is for uh, air or light and everything so what we'll do is they will create an opening here like this so this dorm is with an opening here okay this portion may not be there actually in practice it will not be there this portion they will remove it okay in this case you know we cannot use this formula but what we do is normally in this is we will assume that there is no opening here and we will find out the load coming on this and later from the load you know the final load what we got what will we will do it is we will do is we will remove we will detect the load of this small portion for example this is opening here so we will find out the load as it is without any we'll assume that there is no opening here like that you will find it out at last what you do is uh, this uh, opening of this uh, this portion no which one it is this portion opening of this portion this uh, yellow color as you can see this portion is actually it is not there so that portion the weight of that portion we will remove from the load total load so that is how we uh, calculate okay so that is what it is mentioned calculate the loads that load live load and etc uh, as usual and the live load will be given in the question dead load will be 25 into t t is thickness of the dome okay and uh, if uh, opening is there means you not know, find you find out the total load like this and at last w into 2 pi into r into h okay using this you you find out the you know opening the the dome above the opening the portion of the dome above the opening okay when you do a problem it will be clear so this is how we do so just to keep in mind this is okay so what is that you have done in this step you found out the loads actually okay the dead load and live load so the next step is uh, we will be finding out the h and t the maximum value of h and the maximum value of t okay so normally as i told you before there is a one possibility is that there will be dead load alone another possibility is you will be having dead load as well as the Uh, point load also so it is uh, as simple as that you know the formula for dead load and uh, you know the formula for udl i mean uh, i think i i i i i made a mistake i told wrongly uh, there will be uh, two cases like you know one is ud load will be there okay and another case point load will be there okay alone alone ud load and alone point load otherwise both ud load and point load will be there Uh, i think point load alone case will not come actually because the weight of the dome is always ud load only so either ud load otherwise ud load plus point load okay in that case what you will do is you will find out the h uh, the the combination of the load comes both the ud load and point load comes then first you will find out uh, the h due to ud load and then h due to point load add both that is how we do but uh, there is a small case is there here because this is the formula for finding out the dome ud load and the point load and when the ud load comes meridional thrust t is equal to wr into 1 plus cos theta and h is wr into cos square theta plus cos theta minus 1 by 1 plus cos theta which we have discussed yesterday and dome with the point load it is meridional thrust is w divided by 2 pi r square sin square theta and hoop force is h minus w cos x square theta by 2 pi r so if in a dom if both the loads are present you find out this find out this separately and add it similarly when you come to the hoop force you find out this separately this separately add it okay so one thing here we should note this it is not like simply you find out because we don't know which at which degree you know this h will be maximum or uh, uh, sorry t will be maximum or h will be maximum t will be maximum at this point no doubt in that when h is equal to t that will zero okay so what you, what you need to do is we need to prepare a table like this starting from 0 10 20 like that it goes to up to this level maybe 60 or 61 degree like that okay because why we are doing this one is because we don't know at which degree uh, because h will be maximum here but sometimes you know Uh, sorry it uh, it will be maximum here but when you have a combination no we don't know uh, which way, where it will be maximum sometimes it will be here sometimes because positive value will come here somewhere negative value will give something here so to get an idea 
uh, you will be doing like this you will be making a column like this first column 0 10 because you can take an interval of 10 degrees 0 10 20 51 what why 51.8 because 50, at 51.8 your h will be 0 okay this will be 0 here your h value will be 0 here so or 0 okay so you you will be making a table like this as i told you if the theta is here it is 0 then 10 degree because you will have uh, everywhere you know you will have h here h here h here h here h here because we don't know which h is maximum or which h is minimum for finding out we will be doing like this so you will get uh, this column is for t and this column here for h so you will be getting a maximum value here for the t and uh, hoop stress you know hope force you know maximum will be here and uh, it will be positive and as you come down your value of theta will be reducing and at uh, 51.8 you will be having zero then it will, it will it will be negative so you take you should take a maximum positive value also okay you have to take maximum negative value also and for t you will be having getting only one positive value okay and for these values you will be designing and uh, another one variation in this case is suppose you have a dead load on you this is the case only with the dead load okay when you have a dead load and live load uh, it is like you know this can be in the case with the dead load alone and dead load plus live load but when you have a dead load and live load because you should take consider two cases one is dead load with the live load okay another case is without live load also one is with the dead load and live load and one is without live load alone dead load alone because sometimes uh, you know because uh, when you have compa combination like this w point load and, and the w ud load sometimes if you remove live load you will get a maximum value because we don't know that is the reason you should consider two cases uh, one with the live load alone if this is applicable only when you have two loads that is dead load and point load and ud load okay when if it is only point ud load you don't need to do you do only one one column like this okay when you have ud load and point load then you have to do like this okay so first let us take the first case okay hope i think i didn't confuse you i think you know so if you have only dead load then you consider this one okay and if you have i mean only ud load you consider this one okay when you have ud load plus means when you have udl and point load okay then you should consider two cases one first case is uh, dead load with the live load and second case is without live load while well, dead load alone so let us take the first case with the uh, live load and the dead load so you know you will have u point load, ud load also point load also so you should consider uh, with the ud load you should consider t wr1 plus cos theta with the uh, point load you should consider you will find out t that is w by 2 pi r square h so you add both that will be the final value of t okay that is also for each degree 0 10 20 51.8 and 60 maximum value of theta and uh, considering ud load for h value this is for h you should uh, find out uh, h value with the ud load find out uh, h value with the point load then add both okay so what will happen is you will have a one maximum value of h will be there and maximum value of uh, negative will be there negative positive h and negative h will be there you will be getting only one value for t okay so that is one case this is this case is with the dead load and live load so another case is you should uh, consider without live load okay with the dead load but without live load same way you, you deal with the ud load you will find out t with the point load you should find out then add both that will be the value of t same way with for h with the ud load you find out this and uh, without with the uh, point load you find out, add both that will give you so you will get another set of three values you will get this one and this one you don't need to do exactly this t because t value will not uh, if you remove live load also it will not uh, uh, reflect anything so in this case you can remove this one but uh, uh, this h value only will be having variation okay this you don't need to do it actually okay without uh, live load okay so this part you can remove only this portion you should uh, consider 
for you should uh, without liveload you should find out h okay so you will have having h4 values you will get 1 2 3 4 one is with the live load one is without live load positive and negative so in this four values maximum value you take maximum out of these four values maximum value you take that you should consider for the design and here this value you will consider for this sign okay so another thing is that you will be now you will be having three values uh, one positive value and one negative value maximum value of positive and maximum value of negative for the uh, h h and one value for t okay so as you can see here so this is the force actually so you should find out the stress stress is forced by area if you consider one meter so uh, meridional meridional stress okay meridional meridia meridional stress sigma t is equal to t by t t is thickness so that one you should check so you will get a value for this so this value should be less than the compressive permissible com actual compressive stress of concrete that is shown in is 456 so you can see here this is a direct compression okay yes 456 okay these values if it is m25 concrete it should be maximum 6 okay so that one you should uh, take a check of this and uh, you will be you will be taking as i told you will have four values right now two positive and two negative so out of this two positive you should take the maximum value but that will be the maximum positive hoop stress and out of this two negative you should take the maximum that will be the maximum negative hoop stress so for uh, positive hoop stress also you should find out the hoop stress you, whatever you are getting is hoop force only so hoop stress is nothing but force by area so i am taking one meter width you know so h by 1 into t will come that is the area so one you don't need to write so this also should be less than sigma cc permissible actual compressive stress in concrete okay same value what is given here okay right and uh, next one is this uh, the negative case negative hoop stress will be there so that also sigma h is h by t so this should be less than the actual tensile stress of the concrete which is shown in is 3370 part 2 so i think that is there somewhere here uh, that value i think it is there in the table 2 i think uh, i missed out it is here somewhere so you can see this this is the one okay it is there in the is uh, for table number one is 3370 part two okay so that one you just uh, take care so once it is in the safer side you know once it is once you got both are in the limiting within the limit then we are safe otherwise we need to increase the thickness so that stress will reduce okay so once this is done so the next step is uh, for finding out the area of steel actually so uh, so you will be getting now see once so how many values you got for t only one value for h you will be having two values okay once everything is in safer set then what you what you do is out of these three values take the maximum value forget about the sign and take the maximum value okay okay out of these three values once the checking is over you take the maximum value okay and for that value we should find out the area of steel so the area of steel consists of two types as i one is ast1 and ast2 ast1 is based upon the maximum of t and h whatever you got the ast2 t2 as per the code it says that for temperature uh, you know 0.15 percentage we should take actually so ast1 is nothing but maximum of uh, t or h maximum you take and this divided by sigma st because you know that stress force is stress into area therefore area is equal to force by stress okay this sigma st is uh, 230 or uh, uh, mega pascal or fp 415 uh, 230 for fp 415 and uh, for mild steel it is 140 yeah the st2 is 0.15 percentage of gross area when i say gross area is 0.15 it is like this uh, 
because not to have a confusion point 1 is a point 1 5 point 1 5 divided by 100 into 1000 into thickness t like that yeah, how much is coming you find it out right then you once you got this ast ast1 and ast2 add it and you will get ast then use uh, uh, you know 8 mm dia or 12 mm dia bars 8 mm because 12 and will be more actually so take some 8 or 10 mm then find out the spacing the spacing should not be more than 3d here d means the thickness of the dome okay or 300 mm whichever is higher okay so with this your dome design is complete and the next one is you will have to do your design of ring beam as i told you here this is a dome okay so dome will be resting on a beam it's called ring beam and lower and higher one actually okay so as a matter of fact the ring beam will experience you know the force in horizontal direction actually because you have a thrust t here actually you will have your t here i'll draw in red color it's uh, because the, the meridional thrust t will be there here t so this t will have a horizontal component like this it will be t cos theta so this cos the t cos theta will be the one which will be applied on the beam for the full if the dome is like this so everywhere all this dome directions you know it will be applied like this t cos theta t cos theta everywhere all over so we will be taking only the half actually okay so it is just you can consider like this so t cos theta full and half is so the uh, the maximum value will be i mean the, sub, the reaction will be t cos theta and d by 2 for this t cos theta d by 2 we should uh, design the beam okay so for uh, act, force acting on the dm will be p is equal to t cos theta and d by 2 okay t means which one we got in the previous previous slide then ast required is p by sigma st find out the spacing s is equal to a into thousand by ast uh, find out the spacing then another thing is that here it is you should check because it is comes here now so it will be a, 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 a tensile force might uh, develop actually so sigma ct is equal to p divided by ac plus m minus 1 into ast okay this one already we have seen in uh, water tanks okay circular water tanks same is the case here so sigma t is equal to p divided by p is nothing but the force tc cos theta and d by 2 ac means area of the concrete plus m minus 1 m is your modular ratio that is 280 divided by 3 sigma cb so you know that ast from this you know sigma ct you can get it from this code as i told you table number one this values you will get direct tension okay so all other values will be known to you sigma ct is known to you t p is known to you m is known to you ast is known to you so only one is az az means uh, our beam is there no the area of the concrete beam so this is the beam this is d and this is b so b into d will be ac so from this formula you can find out ac once you got ac then you can proportion b and d okay right uh, so another step is uh, the finally you will have to provide the shear reinforcement okay so as per the code 26.5 point is456 close 26 51.6 you know you should give the minimum spacing 0.87 fi into asv divided by 0.4b so in this uh, one thing is that sv means sv sv is equal to spacing of the stirrups okay fi you know that 415 or whatever it is and asv is not the area of the vertical stirrups suppose if you are using uh, two legged stirrups of uh, diameter whatever diameter so two into pi d square 3.14 into d square by d square by 4 okay d is nothing but diameter which diameter of bar you are using for stirrups that one okay and b is the width of the beam so 
so that's all with this so hope it is clear so the uh, next one we will discuss so these are all some things i told i told you know because t will be getting h like that in the previous the went for so in this you know just a example i have done so this is the maximum value of t and uh, h is positive value you will get maximum 1.95 here when t is zero negative value i will get when h is equal to 67 point in this particular problem i am telling so what will we get you will have to take three values 1 2 3 this is positive value this is negative value okay then uh, you should check for the stresses And once it is all safe, then you should take the maximum out of this three. One point nine five is the maximum. For this, we should find out the AST. Okay. Hope this is clear for you. Okay. And if it is a point on the UD load comes, you know, with the point for for finding out the H. So point U with the UD load, you will find out the, the value. So okay. And point load, you find out separately. Then add both. So you will get uh, this is your maximum value. For H, positive value. This is your maximum value negative. Okay, so that's all. I think uh, when we do a problem, we'll do the problem next class. Then it will be clear. Thank you very much.